<sighs> Whatever. Okay. So, we're, I'm just going to go through uh, and we're going to talk about some things that have been happening in the JavaScript community over the last however long. Last month. Uh, so, last month we uh, talked about whether Express was dying or not. This is a valid concern um, because uh, the, the lead maintainer of it, uh, well, oh God, Doug Wilson, uh, basically he was doing all the work and Strongloop was taking all of the credit and then IBM acquired Strongloop uh, and uh, Doug, I don't know which company he works for, but apparently they're a direct competitor to IBM. So then there was a big conflict and Doug wasn't sure how the you know, why should I even bother working for this company where I'm not even getting any credit and not only that, they're a competitor. Um, but it's been a good resolution to this. Um, Express is now in uh, an, an incubation project of the Node Foundation. So this is sort of a, a new thing that's come out of the, um, the new open governments model which has been um, established for the Node project and hang on. Oh God, go away. Responsibilities. Okay. Um, so now it's um, been moved to a sort of a, yeah, a, a, an open model with which is sort of similar to the way that the Node project itself is going to be governed. So there's going to be a working group, a technical committee, all this kind of stuff, which is supposed to help uh, move the Express project forward. Uh, it includes Express, the website, and um, all of the um, packages which Express uses. Because Express nowadays is it's really just sort of like a glue. It doesn't really do much. Um, it just uh, gives you that um, request, um, oh, re request response next pattern. Um, so that's cool. And, but what does this really mean? It just means that Express gets to live. Um, Doug Wilson, who's doing like really great work, he, he can continue to work on the project. He supports this move. So, uh, and, and also a lot of the other contributors. Um, it was a, it's a very constructive thread. If there's, um, it's a very, very long um, GitHub issue. If you care to read it, um, go check it out. Interesting. But Express is now in as a part of the, the Node Foundation, so that's really cool. Um, last month, we also had a remote um, memory uh, disclosure via the buffer module, which is built into Node. Uh, so buffer buffer has a, an unsafe API where if you accidentally pass in a number to the buffer constructor, you can get back uninitialized memory, which could contain things like passwords or keys or in, uh, other things which shouldn't be revealed to um, anyone. Uh, and so this was a problem, and uh, for us uh, identified this um, and. Uh, he's released a package called Safe Buffer. So if you're concerned about accidentally leaking um, memory, uh, un, you know, uninitialized memory to your clients, all you have to do is drop in the Safe Buffer module. It uh, works exactly like the Buffer module, but it adds a couple of additional methods. Um, and the one that you're interested there in, in there is the buffer.alloc method, which gives you um, zeroed memory, which we um, safe to, to use, won't expose anything that it's not supposed to. What are the trade-offs? Well, there'll, there'll be a small trade-off because it needs to zero the memory. Uh, small like performance overhead, but uh, minimal. And you have to install, you have to have an extra dependency. I guess that's the trade-off. Um, so another exciting development which uh, that happened last month was uh, Microsoft uh, submitted a pull request to Node Core to add, add the JavaScript runtime that uh, lives in their new Microsoft Edge browser um, in, to get that to live alongside the V8 implementation um, in Node. So basically you would be running Node instead of on top of V8, you run it on Chakra Core, which is pretty cool. Uh, there was a very, very lengthy discussion and lots of emotions, um, and the issue was closed, um, which may not be surprising, but uh, it was actually um, closed in a good way. Um, it's been converted in... The, the resolution is that they've added a new repo um, under the Node.js account called Node Chakra Core, and it's basically a fork of Node that runs on Chakra Core, and it's um, under the Node.js... Um, uh, account. So 
it's like an official, an official fork. Um, and the reasoning behind doing this as opposed to maintaining the fork to, to maintain the other engine inside the node account, uh, the node thing was um, uh, they want to allow experimentation but they don't want to put any uh, additional burden on the current maintainers um, which are already, uh, they already have enough things to worry about like, um, like we'll see in a moment. Um, and so how this will work is every, every week they'll merge with the, the node core and, um, and update their version. And so if it also, um, the node issues queue is already full of stuff, so I guess it's a nice thing as well because anything to do with the chakra core stuff can go into the chakra core um, fork issues. So that's nice. Good resolution. Um, support that. Now um, on to this, this month's news. Um, the NPM, uh, so Isaac released a blog post recent, recently um, saying that he was intending on moving the, uh, the node command line client into, uh, into a foundation. Didn't necessarily say that he was going to move it into Node.js foundation, but uh, he wants to move it into a foundation. Um, and I'm not sure what's prompted this, but there has been a, you know, a lot of uh, alternative node clients popping up and uh, there's been a few issues coming around about uh, people complaining about the, the fact that, that all, the, all of us, are, um, we're, re we're relying on a single company um, to make NPM happen. So people are concerned about this. Um, and so moving into, into a foundation, that's a really good thing. Um, good for the community, good for the client. It'll be overall good. Uh, we've now got uh, ES2016. It's been announced. Um, you, you may have been quite excited when you saw the ES2015 um, get released. It has all these many, many features, amazing number of features. Um, so you might, you might be surprised at the next slide. <laughs> and not only that, and I have, here I'll zoom in a bit. Uh, <laughs> and they're not even very interesting. Uh, so ex ex exponentiation operator just allows you to do exponents. Uh, it's uh, hat hat and includes, just tells you whether something's included. Uh, but it's, it's not finalized standard. This is it. This is that, that's everything for ES. <laughs> Is 2016. Well, that makes sense. That's the previous one was a big jump. Pardon? 2015 was a big jump. Yeah, but like 2015 was hopefully like a once-off. Um, you know, the, the, the community. I mean, we still haven't. Or we still haven't got everything that was implemented in uh, ES 2015 um, implemented in uh, modern engines. So, you know, if, if they went and did that same thing again, I'm pretty sure everybody would have. Uh, they would have burnt the place down. Um, so th this is this is probably a good thing. Um, but the, the other point is, is that it doesn't, uh, well, you don't, you don't have to, well, okay, things which people might be surprised, there was no decorators and there were no async functions. Async functions were very close to getting in, but they didn't quite make it. Uh, and the reason why is because uh, the, the proposals to go into the spec have to go through a process. They start out at straw man, then they go through um, stage zero, all the way up to stage four. Um, and uh, you can see, if you go to this GitHub repo, TC39 ECMA262, um, it gives you the status for all the proposals. And you'll see here that the only two ones that actually made it to stage four are these two, uh, includes and the exponentiation operator. Um, so, uh, but the point is, is that you don't have to actually wait for, the, uh, for ES2017. Uh, browsers, uh, implementers are free to implement the, the features as soon as they reach stage four. Um, so what will, what will happen is these features will start trickling into browsers and um, hopefully, um, so yeah, as soon as it's at stage four, it's basically ready to go into the spec. So um, uh, we'll, yeah, hopefully we won't have to wait a whole year to get some of these um, other features, which are already, at, uh, the good features, which are already at stage three. I recommend going to that website and having a look at um, some of the features that are being proposed and, um, you know, because there's a lot of interesting stuff in the pipeline. Uh, there was a, a node security release this month. Um, includes uh, two vulnerabilities, request smuggling and response splitting. Um, if nothing, um, it's interesting just to go read what these things are. They're fairly low. Um, they're, not, um, they're not incredibly severe, 
Um, and there's also a, 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 the updated versions of Node that include that security fix also include an updated version of OpenSSL, open which comes with more fixes. Um, so if you are running Node in production, who is running Node in production now? So if you are on 010, 012, uh, 4.3, or, um, or uh, V4 or V5, um, these versions are all affected by these vulnerabilities. Um, so make sure that you update to at least these versions. Um, promises and core. So this is, uh, somebody has submitted a pull request to take the, all of the, the core APIs and at the moment the API, if you've used Node, the API that we use is callback based and you, know, you, you pass a function to the, to the thing that you're calling and you get an error and the res response back. But with promises, you get like a, a dot then function that you get. Uh, so it's taking, well, it's taking something that looks like this and making it look like that, which might not seem important, but uh, some people think that this is basically the end of the world and uh, it's, a, it's a major drama. It is a major, major, it's one of the most, um, most dramas drama. <laughs> it's just it's serious, serious reading. Uh, and the poor lad that has submitted this pull request is this, uh, is this guy here, Chris Dickinson. Uh, he, he's actually, um, he's, a, he's, he's very brave, let's just say that. Uh, <laughs> but he's been working like so hard to get this pull request in, so uh, people will raise issues and he writes like, you know, uh, two feet of response. Um, <laughs> Yeah, lengthy discussion. So that the, this issue, which is still open, and it's been open for a number of days, has 544 uh, co comments on it um, with 83 participants. That's an issue. Um, so the issue got so out of control, it's got a TLDR at the top of it, uh, and it's actually, it's been converted into its own repo uh, <laughs> with open issues. Uh, there's 20 of them, and pull requests. So um, it's serious, but um, it might actually happen. We might actually get promises and call one day. Um, so so promise a promise I don't promise anything. <laughs> uh, but uh, so yeah, some of the concerns are there's uh, it, the it, existing APIs break. So the, the, it would be really nice. So for something like fs.read file, if it just, because at the moment it doesn't return anything useful, it could just return a promise. But there's a bunch of APIs which do return stuff. Um, so you can't just apply this thing liberally over the entire API. So that sucks. Um, it also breaks a bunch of sort of introspection tools which are in uh, Node. Uh, things like, uh, in pro when you've got promises, things like, um, Syntax errors will now get caught by this thing, uh, and then you have this bubbling issue. There's all these, and it also breaks post-mortem debugging. Um, so there's all these issues. If you want to follow along, uh, uh, watch this Node.js promises repo. Um, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Are Browser you, news. Are what? you in favor? Or? Uh, I don't think it's worth having an opinion on other than, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's just not like, the, th the thing is, people get really emotional about promises, and it's just like, it's just not worth it. It's not worth it. Like, uh, they, they're cool, uh, and generally the, the people who don't like them are exactly the people who haven't used them. Like, if you haven't invested, let's say, if you haven't, uh, I sort of feel like you, can't, you, you don't have a valid opinion about something until you've used it with an open mind in production. Um, you know, until then, um, you're just uh, being emotional. Sorry. No, that's a good uh, point. Uh, and uh, so I, I actually started using promises because I hated them. I was wrong. Uh, I hated them, and I was trying to, I was using them to dig up more dirt so that I would have a more um, substantial argument so I could say exactly why they were crap. Um, but I was like, oh, they're actually not that bad. So anyway. <laughs> uh, in browser news, uh, I, I had trouble finding good stuff on this, but I'm nearly done. Uh, all the major browsers are now implementing Fetch, uh, and everything except for Edge uh, is, uh, is shipping service workers. 
and Edge is prototyping it. So that's really cool. So these are like interesting new features which are coming down the line. And also uh, our mate Glenn, uh, he also points out that uh, everything but Edge has now got um, CSS variables, which is also a really powerful feature. So that's cool. Um, looks like we're, uh, all the web stream stuff is happening. Go check out Jake Archibald's post on that. Um, this, is gonna, this changes the way that we interact with servers, basically. Um, local news, um, Ghost, which is a popular blogging platform um, built on Node.js. Um, they're moving their business to Singapore. Uh, doesn't mean they're actually ever going to be here, but um, it, it's nice. Um, <laughs> so that's cool. And, um, and there's also uh, an event called FOSS Asia, which is happening uh, next month. And I would like to invite the person who is running that to come up and talk a little bit more about that in a second. Because, <laughs> well, otherwise I have to come up and show this one slide which says end. You can. <laughs> Afterwards. So that's it. That's me. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs>